Hello, welcome back. My name is Judge Jim Gray and you are here with me in the judges' chambers. I'm a retired judge from the Superior Court in Orange County, California, and not only are you with me, but today Governor Gary Johnson is with me, with me as well, and I've asked him to remove his tie, remove his coat. This is going to be a kind of easygoing discussion. And in the, in the whole vein of full disclosure, we were running mates, uh, libertarian candidates for president and vice president in 2012. You are the best. This is two cycles now where I am running for uh, president uh, on the libertarian ticket where I've been the lesser half of the ticket. Well, that would be, that's a debatable subject, but uh, <laughs> honestly, Gary, it was one of the proudest experiences of my life and the most gratifying to be connected well, with you, and it still is. Ditto, ditto. Well, thank you. This man is unique. He is different, and I believe, in fact, I put the pressure on him before, and I'll do it again with you publicly, that we've always had Winston Churchills in our world, even Golda Meir's, even Margaret Thatcher's, even Nelson Mandela's. They just don't get elected. And this is the man for our times. This man will bring in a conservative and liberal government, libertarian government, and people will work well together. So I'm anxious for our viewers to get to know you a little bit like I've become to know you. So tell me, what, did, what were you feeling when you were a junior, senior in college and you decided that, hey, maybe you had to work for a living, your future? What did you do about it? Well, I've paid for everything that I've had since I've been 17 years old, and that's been by choice. And uh, so I've had a lot of 75 cent an hour jobs, uh, starting in construction where I took up framing. But I've been an entrepreneur my entire life, so I started a one-man handyman business in Albuquerque in my second, third year in college. and. Uh, Grew that business to employ over a thousand people. Amazing when you share in the profits. Uh, um, amazing when you show up on time. Um, amazing when you do what you say you're going to do. Well, you climb a lot of peaks, and one of them was you decided that you were going to be running for governor. Uh, you've never run for anything before, as I understand it politically, uh, and uh, you just all of a sudden decided to do that. Why? What went into your thought process? Well, believing that politics is a high calling, believing that um, you could do good by others, and I've come to really appreciate just how, you know, a lot of people don't think I've done any good at all. I appreciate that, but, or I... I recognize that, but I think that I have really made a difference, and that I've made a difference from the standpoint of uh, equal opportunity, um, non-discrimination, uh, uh, smaller government, uh, people being able to make their own choices in their own lives as long as those choices don't harm others, so marriage equality, woman's right to choose, legalizing marijuana, um, let's stop dropping bombs that have had the unintended consequence of making things worse, uh, not better. In 2012, when I learned that you were running for president, I started calling you the most qualified person to be president that I know of, and that, of course, continues to this day. And I guess maybe as I kind of joke around a little, I said it a few too many times, so yes, you did ask me to be your running mate, so now what am I supposed to say? But after you did that, it just blew me away, and I've shared this before with people. What did you tell me? You told me on the phone that, Jim, if you disagree with me for any reason in the, during the race itself, feel free to say so publicly. I've never asked you this question. What was going through your mind? Because I'll bet you that Barack Obama did not say that to Joe Biden, <laughs> or uh, Mitt Romney did not say that to Paul Ryan. What was going through your mind that led you to say that? I did that as governor of New Mexico with my entire cabinet. I told my entire cabinet, you, all of you are welcome to disagree with me every single day in front of the media, but you darn well better disagree and then point out where my position is on that issue. Now, there weren't any real big disagreements, and I was confident when I told you that, that uh, we're really not going to disagree. That's what, that's what I want to, you know. I told my receptionist, I said, if I'm out running at noon, I don't want you to make up a story. I want you to tell them what I'm doing. The truth. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. What do you think about that for an idea? <laughs> I've never encountered anyone in politics that had that philosophy that's actually carried it out. This is the type of person that he has been, and this is the type of person that he will continue to be. I'm totally in your corner. But 
As far as something else, a little bit different about you, uh, you have, as I understand it, uh, climbed the tallest peaks in all seven continents. First of all, name them and tell us something a little bit unusual <laughs> about each one. Well, how about let's reverse the roles and I'll help you out. What are the seven? Oh, I couldn't help you. Well, I mean, North, North America. Everest, uh, uh, Everest okay. in Asia, well, yeah. North, North America. America. North America, but it's really Mount McKinley. It's out Mount McKinley, McKinley Alaska, renamed now Denali, which has always been Denali. Okay. In South America, it's Aconcagua in right. Africa, it's Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro okay. Yep. Uh, in Europe, it's Elbrus. I didn't think you were going to get that one, Did but not. that's in Russia, and that's on the uh, that's on the Black Sea. And then uh, the continent of Australasia, which is Karsten's Pyramid. Oh, and yes. then, lastly, the continent of uh, of Antarctica, which is uh, Vincent. Okay. Tell us just a little bit of your experience on each one, because I have never contemplated doing anything of the kind. But how is each one different? How is each one? I know they're all challenging, but uh, what, what just stays out in your mind on Vincent or any of these others? Well, uh, I'll, I'll list them from uh, uh, hardest to easiest. Uh, I thought that Everest was the hardest. I mean, there was just so much so many people that have died climbing Mount Everest. It was a magical place, uh, halfway around the world, nothing mechanized whatsoever. Uh, people in Nepal being extremely happy and having nothing materially. Here it is in our country, we have everything materially, and you know what, I don't know if we're so happy. The second hardest one was uh, Karsten's Pyramid. Uh, 5'9", rock climb at the end, 45 miles in, 45 miles out, 7 inches of rain a day through jungle to get into it, mud up to your knees in many places, and actually going through uh, the only cannibalistic areas that still exist uh, in, in the world. And you paid money to do that, is that what you're telling <laughs> me? paid money to do that. The third hardest was McKinley, mm -hmm. uh, Denali in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was the first one that I climbed, and we took everything, myself and two buddies, we took everything but the kitchen sink on that trip. We took way too much stuff, uh, but we were successful, and um, all of them, we were, uh, I was successful, never had to go back on any of them, but uh, number four I put as uh, Aconcagua, South America, really a slog, 23,000 plus feet. Did it with my kids, uh, Saya and Eric, and uh, partner Kate, and uh, uh, Eric's partner wife now, uh, Lauren. So that was a really wonderful experience. Uh, fifth in line would be um, uh, Vincent in Antarctica. Antarctica, bigger, con <laughs> bigger geographically than the continental United States? Well, I didn't know that. Precipitation less than the Sahara Desert. There were footprints from the prior climbing season that were still there when we got there this season. Extraordinary. There's no life on Antarctica whatsoever other than no wildlife except where water meets either land or ice and we were far enough inland to where there was no wildlife, uh, zero. Next easiest was Kilimanjaro. It was a wonderful trip, again, with my kids and Kate and uh, my daughter's partner, Josh. Uh, but we went and we did uh, Mount Kenya first, then we did uh, Kilimanjaro, then we went on safari. It was just fun. Uh, I would suggest to anybody that has any inclination to do anything like that Kilimanjaro is the is the ticket it was fun it's a fan it was a it's a family experience and then the easiest one was Elbrus Russia it was an, actually a chairlift uh, to to start the climb uh, very close to the, our last Winter Olympics but uh, uh, you know big snow and ice 19,000 foot plus um, uh, it was all of them had this aspect of uh, any one of them could have killed you. But the method behind this question: you get into life, you get into government, you have problems, you have have tasks. Isn't it kind of the same thing as climbing a mountain? Life is similar to uh, life is all about setbacks. Life is setbacks. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. That's what you need to plan on. 
Um, it's how you deal with setbacks that ultimately determine success. So, uh, look, uh, every day something goes wrong, you can crawl up in a ball, say you're a victim, give up, or you can recognize that um, that's just the way things work and get a smile on your face and put one foot in front of the other tomorrow. And that's me. I'm the smile on your face. <laughs> it's true. I've known him for one, quite one a foot while. in front of the other. I believe, in fact, I can't ask you the question because it's too general, but I believe that the best thing that can happen to a person in life is seeing their children grow up to be happy, successful, and well adjusted. Tell us about your children. Well, that I've witnessed just that. My daughter, Saya, was valedictorian out of 9,000 students, University of Colorado Boulder. Mm -hmm. She is exceptional. She is an artist extraordinaire. She is currently a uh, lighting design for uh, the Aspen Santa Fe Ballet. So she gets all around the world doing this, and uh, I think she's going to be famous someday. And then Eric, my son, when I ran for president in 2012, uh, uh, Eric, uh, for two years, uh, was by my side uh, unpaid. And he went back to school um, and got his degree in uh, oriental uh, medicine, and he is now practicing. And I am so proud of Eric, and I am so proud of his wife, Lauren. And I now have a grandchild, uh, Cora. And uh, uh, Eric, uh, just, oh my gosh, my kids, oh my gosh. You are running for president of the United States of America. I happen to believe, like I said earlier, that you're the man for our times. But I'm going to ask you, instead of looking at me, to look to your camera and to tell people, the voters out there, why should they vote for Governor Gary Johnson for president in 2016? Well, philosophically speaking, I think I'm in line with what most people believe, and that is keep government uh, out of my pocketbook, uh, keep government uh, out of the bedroom. And then I'm skeptical on these military interventions going all the way back to Vietnam that has anything we've done really made things better worldwide or have we made things potentially worse? Make no mistake, if we are attacked, we're going to attack back. We should have an impenetrable national defense. Libertarians are not isolationists. We're non-interventionists. We should rule the world with free trade, which is the opposite of crony capitalism. We should rule the world and be diplomatic. We should be engaged to a very high level. That said, if uh, myself and Bill Weld, my running mate, two former governors, Republican governors in heavily blue states, re-elected in both of our states, New Mexico and Massachusetts, if we're elected president and vice president, we're going to appoint Democrats and Republicans. Uh, both those Democrats and Republicans are going to be libertarian-leaning. But imagine um, that scenario versus Hillary elected, Trump elected. It's going to be more polarized than ever. Uh, electing somebody that's going to stand in the middle and challenge both Republicans and Democrats to come to the table and address very real issues that this country has, make the judgment yourself. Which one do you think has the potential of actually bringing about change? This is Judge Jim Gray. You are with me and with Governor Gary Johnson in the judges' chambers. I have a profession that waits, sees the evidence before making decisions, and I have done that myself here. My decision is Governor Gary Johnson is the man for our times, 2016. Our world cries out for someone who has stability, who has common sense, who has a track record, and who has a lot of caring within him. So I hope you give it a try. Go and look at Johnson Well 2016. Do another favor for yourselves. And what is this I Side With? .com? Get online. Take the political quiz. I Side With. .com. I think everybody owes it to themselves to. 60 questions, easy to get online. At the end of the 60 questions, you get paired up with the presidential candidate most in line with your views. I happen to think that you might find, uh, find yourself surprised. I think so, too. I don't think I've heard the Democrat or the Republican ever say that because they don't want this to happen. This man is confident for good reason. That's what I think from the judges' chambers. See what you think. It's really important for you, for your family, for your children, 
and of course for our country. Give it us a look sometime soon in the judges' chambers and support Governor Gary Johnson, Libertarian candidate for president 2016. See you soon.